Now, stress may be something we accept as being part of life, but it doesn't just take its toll on how we feel. By some estimates, it costs the American economy $300 billion every year. Technology is freeing many of us up to work more flexibly, but the flip side, it means we're also connected all the time. Let's speak to Carol Spears, who runs a stress management and employee wellbeing consultancy, is also chair of the International Stress Management Association. So, is it that high tech is the problem or the solution? I think it's a combination of both, meaning high tech gives us everything you want to have around the world. So you can connect from America to China to Japan to the UK in a fraction of a second. The problem is, is that you've got this 24-7 connectivity. And the trouble is that people are not switching off. They're going to bed with their phones. They can't manage without their phones. The computer is second nature to them. And if you, look, if you leave behind your phones, it'll be like, oh my god, how could I even have done that? So I think that connectivity is what we're talking about in today's Stress Awareness Day. So therefore, this is a feature of what we're speaking about today. So give us some practical tips. What, what can we all do, starting today, to reduce stress in our lives? OK, well, three things come to mind, particularly about technology. First of all, the, the email. We're all actually addicted to our email. Another ping, another whoosh comes onto the screen, and all of a sudden we have to answer it. And we forget about the fact that actually it's disturbing us, it's distracting us, and actually we're losing concentration. So the first thing is to actually set regular times to actually read your email. And then second of all, your telephone. Just because it rings does not mean you actually have to answer it. Because you know something, Ben? Voicemail works extremely well, extremely well. And third of all, it's not a question of who you go to bed with these days, it's actually what you go to bed with. So leave behind your iPad, leave behind your phone, actually set an alarm clock and not your phone, because otherwise you convince yourself you have to have your phone because it's an alarm clock. Which you know something? You can leave it outside the door, which I'd suggest you do, on charge, so it's ready for you for the next morning, and uh, that, would be, so that would do you very, very well. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, because pretty much all of those things apply to me, Carol, so um, <laughs> that is a really, really, um, really useful tip. Um, but what can employers do? What can workplaces do? Because a lot of people's stress comes from the job they do. It does, and it's really, it starts from the top. It's up to the employer to ensure that they have safe systems of working for their employees. They can introduce systems interventions such as counselling, such as coaching, such as stress awareness coaching, stress awareness training. So really, it does start from the top, and whatever interventions are being actually offered to employees, it must be that it starts from the C-suite team, so they are the ones to actually say, this is what we're doing, we're looking after the health, the mental health and well being of our employees and we're actually going to be involving ourselves with it as well.